There's a real world application to this class and I'm the example of how artists make a living in the real world. names throughout the state of Arizona were submitted and five people um, were selected to create awards for this special event. The director of Yuma Fine Arts submitted 10 names and what the Arizona Citizen for the Arts Committee did was they went online and they looked at our social media. They looked at our website, they looked at our Instagrams and the content of our posts and that's when they made the um, decision to go with me, they chose me in Yuma to do this, which is really exciting because Yuma never gets chosen. The director said that she had to read the email three times because she couldn't believe that Yuma actually got selected to um, be a part of the, the, it used to be called the Governor's Arts Awards, and now it is called the Arizona Creative Excellence Awards. So I'm just really excited to be able to represent Yuma. So they said that they liked the abstract expressionistic art that I do. So I, I looked at all my media online just to see what I was putting out there, the content. And so I tried to make it, um, I'm trying to formulate ideas and designs based on the work that I've already done in my own style. They don't want it to be like the Stanley Cup. They don't want it to be um, a, a generic award. They want it to be a piece of art. What I'm doing is I'm making small clay sketches and what they're called are maquettes. And from those small clay sketches, I'm working out my problems, you know, little, and then I'll, I'll make it larger. Um, and so that's, that's the process. So I made a piece and my professor said, you know, close but no cigar, keep going. She challenges me just like I challenge my students, which is exactly what I want. Being able to represent Yuma, I'm, I'm not getting the award. It's an opportunity to make an award and representing Yuma, I'm being a good role model to my students. And so my art helps them when they see me work on my art and then, and then they help me a lot of times too. I get a lot of great ideas from them. But just for them to be able to see what a working professional artist looks like and what they do, I think that that's really important. Um, I've had the privilege of knowing Ms. Holly Hendrick for five years when I served as the principal at Cibola High School and from day one I knew that she was extremely passionate about her craft, the ceramics program. Um, in addition, she's not only passionate about her own class but the fine arts community in general. She wants to do what's best for the community uh, and she wants to do what's best for her students. I went to Kofa High School. I had Walt Ashenfelter for a ceramics teacher a long time ago. In 1992, I graduated. I decided that I wanted to become an art teacher. Um, and for a while, I worked for Arizona Western College as a graphic designer. And then um, I went to Northern Arizona University. I received a degree in studio art and got hired almost right away at Cibola by Tony Steen um, 22 years ago and I've been happy here ever since. This is where my family is and Yuma is very important to me so I feel like the best thing that I can do is invest in uh, my own community and my students and which is our future. When dual credit became a focus of Arizona Western College and Yuma Union High School, I decided that even though it was extremely challenging, I was going to go back to school and pursue a master's degree in, um, in visual arts. It's called an MFA in ceramics. So um, it, one, of the, one of my main goals in doing that is so that my students in this class can um, receive dual credit that will allow them to transfer to any university um, in the United States because it is going through Arizona Western College. Cibola High School um, visual arts students have won the Children's Festival of the Arts for like 19 years out of the 23 years that um, it's been going on. So we're very proud of that. Um, we've had the best display um, for many, many times. Um, and other schools have done a great job too. But what we do in this class that makes this class so special is 
I give students a visual problem that um, they're required, they're challenged to solve, and they get to solve it any way they want to. There's a lot of ways in life where you can solve a problem. And being able to understand how to divergently solve visual uh, problems is something that they can take with them no matter what they choose to do, whether they choose to go the career and technical route or they choose to become, um, go to college and um, pursue a vocation that way. Everybody needs to learn how to solve problems. So I understand that there's going to be a few students that pursue the visual arts in college, which is amazing and awesome. Some of them will even become art teachers for our own district, which is super cool. Um, but I love the idea of being able to teach everyone skills that they can use um, in the real world such as getting along with people, looking people in the face and saying hi and able to communicate with people effectively, introduce themselves to each other, um, being able to form cooperative learning teams is really important. So um, learning how to Basically, what I challenge the students to do is to, to take mud and make an object out of it. That's higher level thinking. So they're, they're learning how to um, do something that's complicated, but that also, that higher level thinking can transfer not just in this class, but into their other classes and other situations, real world situations as well. So that's what I'm the most proud of.